thank you really to all of our participants today. I am hoping that you're going to find today's discussion to be informative and useful when you are thinking about pre-filled syringe in your clinical trial. So a few things I'd like to go through in terms of objectives for today's presentation. First, we'll start out looking at a recent history and the different trends of pre-filled syringes in clinical trials. We'll look, examine some market drivers, what's really driving the growth of the use of pre-filled syringe, and really the desire to automate syringe assembly and the labeling for um, clinical trial use. Next, we'll kind of talk about the options when it comes to packaging pre-filled syringes and how those decisions will impact the supply chain. We'll have some discussion about takeaways and some options and risk mitigation when you're talking about the supply chain as well. Lastly, we'll leave some time at the end for some Q&A. So feel free to use your chat box during the presentation or after we've wrapped up um, and submit any questions that may be on your mind about using pre-filled syringes in um, clinical trials and the impacts of supply chain. Okay, Pam, sounds good. Now, we hear a lot these days about syringes as part of the massive growth in biological drugs. Is that how pre-filled pre syringes got their start uh, with biologics? That's really a good question because biologics are certainly responsible for the huge growth that we've seen. Uh, but actually, pre-filled syringes gained uh, traction in the market originally in the early 1980s. And that was with the introduction of various heparins that were using those devices. And so if you're not familiar with it, heparins are given before or after surgery or certain medical procedures to prevent clotting um, or clots from forming in patients. So the use of prefilled syringe for heparin at that time was not only practical, but it was really efficient for um, that particular use. But ever since that point, there has been really a steady growth in the use of prefilled syringes. There are a number of studies currently registered using pre-filled syringe, and that's really come a long way from where we started 10 years ago, where you had about a handful of studies that were using pre-filled syringe to peaking out in 2012 at about 42 trials. As of uh, the first nine months of 2014, there were 25 new trials registered that are testing drug in pre-filled syringe. So I think the message here is that there is a really stable growth period of using pre-filled syringe in clinical trials. You see kind of a, a little bit of a cyclical pattern where you have some early adopters and then the early majority kind of coming along and then you know a stabilization and then again as time moves on, you see, again, more early adopters joining in and, and the, the trend continuing. So I think the big takeaway here is that pre-filled syringe and the use of it in clinical trials and as a method is not really a flavor of the month type of dose form. It's really consistent in its growth and its usage. And really when you kind of think about it, there is a lot of growing popularity to using pre-filled syringe. We have a lot of sponsors that are pursuing development of large molecules instead of maybe small molecule development. Um, we see a lot of therapies coming through the marketplace that are um, kind of novel, right? Monoclonal antibodies, um, different proteins, recombinant vaccines, and all of those different methods of delivering medicine to patients combined with the fact that there's this growing understanding and just general awareness of that patient-focused packaging and patient-focused medicine and delivering drug in a way that's convenient and safe really makes pre-filled syringe an ideal drug delivery device. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, you were mentioning the heparins in the 80s. I know cardiology was the first big therapy area for these devices. Is that still the case? Well, you know, as time has moved on, we've actually seen cardiology take a back seat 
to other therapeutic areas. So if you look at the chart, you know, it displays rheumatology, particularly development and research in rheumatoid arthritis, and infectious diseases such as hepatitis C really make up about half of the approximately 250 studies currently listed in clinicaltrials.gov that are utilizing uh, pre-filled syringes. And so that total number is completed studies as well as those that are currently enrolling. So there are some other areas with some modest clinical trial activity, um, which include immunology as well as, you know, looking at treatment for multiple sclerosis and lupus. You've got some safety studies in there, which would be um, a, a smaller percentage, and then rounding out the um, more singular therapeutic areas would be oncology and cardiology. Then you kind of have the all others, um, and that bucket together um, combines to be about 30%. So, you know, one thing to kind of note here is that this wasn't, you know, an in-depth market study, and so there may be some areas that are underrepresented. For example, you know, we usually see endocrinology show up as a major therapeutic area despite the fact that um, pre-filled syringe is very popular. It's a very widely used device um, for many diabetes trials, and it's widely used in commercial presentations. So this is, this is just meant to be a, um, an overview of potential trials that are out there um, and, and recognizing that there may be some that um, are out there but may not be fully represented in the data.